Hi, my name is Wendy Johnson. I'm a farmer in Floyd County, uh, Charles City, and I am a, I'm a food farmer. Uh, we graze sheep and cattle on 130 acres, um, more specifically right now on 50 acres. Uh, we, grow, we grow some organic grains as well as uh, some pigs and chickens and turkeys and some other poultry. We have a, a market farm. We direct market uh, the majority of our meats uh, to consumers and um, soon some of our grains. Well, I moved here in 2010 and I actually didn't start this farm until 2015. Uh, I really needed to understand uh, basic agronomy because I work on our family farm. Uh, it's a corn and soybean farm and just learn about what's it take to grow a corn plant, for example. So I took the first four or five years to really learn about not only conventional ag, but organic agriculture and, um, and other types of uh, diverse systems and um, decided what kind of farm that we wanted to build here. So this farm used to be uh, corn and soybeans. Um, this riparian area behind me was much narrower um, and it was grazed with sheep. Um, so it had no trees, it was overgrazed, um, and it wasn't the best forage available. No other kind of really diversity on this farm. And we've, uh, over the last uh, eight years now, we've integrated um, tree plantings in the last five. So we've planted a number of trees and shrubs, both for nuts and fruits and hardwoods um, for the last five years, um, restoring this uh, riparian buffer, uh, widening it, putting in fences again, um, and integrating livestock into our uh, crop rotations. We, we started that using, with I started transitioning to organic in 2014, and we had some row crop uh, rotations and we'd integrate the sheep into our pasture forage um, timeframe um, in that rotation. Meanwhile, we've had these like pretty torrential flood, flooding events um, in 16 and 18 specifically um, that really helped us decide that we wanted to, when I say we, it's my husband and I, that we wanted to keep some of that acreage into forage. And so um, we now, pasture more and crop less. Um, and so now we've also integrated custom grazing. So we now custom graze some cattle, cow-calf pairs as extra added income. And we've added Kernza as a small grain. It's a perennial grain um, that's no-till. So we are now 100% on this 130 acres perennial. No tillage, no chemicals, um, and it's a dream. I knew that I didn't really want to work with chemicals that much. Um, I also knew that I didn't want to sit in a tractor all the time. And I love using my body and moving around and walking around and being physical, both my husband and I do. Um, and we get to work with animals, which is great, on the livestock on the land. Um, and it just we wanted to grow food for people. So we wanted to bring that kind of, you know, back in 2010, it was really hard to find local food. Um, and that has since changed, which has just been wonderful. And we've really been able to grow food for people, not only um, animal proteins, but uh, also with our, with our grains. And so just getting that interaction and contact with, with the consumer to the farmer um, and tying in even we invite um, kids to the farm getting them involved learning what's growing seeing what's happening um, is just really it's just really exciting and so we've we've really enjoyed that consumer farmer relationship so our our grains are I'm going to take Kernza for example um, it is for brewing and for flour. We've, we've given a little bit to our chickens and things, so it's really a food grade crop. And so kind of getting an increase in a, a resilient and robust fiber shed, or I'm sorry, a food shed, uh, meaning that our grains can go to a, a local brewery, a craft brewery, for example. Our grains can go to a local mill. Um, we're doing this with fiber as well is and then to a local consumer is is what i'm talking about we hope to have soon a package package goods um, that have a farm name or the cooperative name of the grain in a flower that home bakers can use um, for their kitchens
So how resilient are we? We are um, incredibly resilient. So when I talk about, we talked about flooding earlier, um, now we're in a drought. We've been able to not, we don't feed any hay. We have not had to feed any hay during the last three years of drought. Um, obviously we feed hay in the winter time, but in the growing season, we've, we've had enough forage using our adaptive grazing, rotational grazing, to really um, be able to provide enough forage for our cows <laughs> and sheep. Um, so it's just really amazing. If you let the land rest, it grows back. It's not like it's magic. It's just that it, it's, it's perennial. That's, what, that's the power of perennials. And you, know, you asked a question earlier that I don't think I touched on exactly about you know, what we've done on this farm and why, it's so, you know, why is it so different and unique and why we did it. Um, you know, I don't, I, I'd like to see this kind of diversification. If you think about all the farms in Iowa, for example, what if every farm just had a little bit of diversification added onto it? You know, like, let's say they re re restored a riparian area. Let's say they planted five acres of trees. Let's say they put, you know, put um, some forage and livestock, you know, on 50 acres whatever the ratio might be, we might be in a, uh, in a much different, in a more resilient place than we are right now. You know, in the last 10 years, we've seen pretty big changes in terms of, for example, food farmers, market farmers. Um, they might be small, but they exist. And <clears throat> for example, we get, we get um, people that email us every year. They want to intern on this farm uh, or apprentice. Um, we take about two a year. It's, we have to turn some down. When we have apprentices, we offer a farm stay in, with us, uh, like a room and board. And then there's also, we've partnered with some small apartments um, in town um, that, that they, could, they could stay at. So our apprentices and interns, they come from all over the nation. So they are, we have one right now from Texas. Uh, earlier this year, we had one from San Diego County. Uh, another one from Wisconsin. I work on a conventional farm too, and I, I don't get anybody, I can't get anybody to work on that farm to help, help me like bring in the harvest and things. The, the, the future of agriculture is this. It's diverse, it's fun, it's joyful. You see life. Um, our farm is supporting life and growing life and uh, I mean we see frogs and snakes and all different kinds of mammals and birds and um, it's just fun to be outside and, and working with the livestock and the, and, and the wildlife and everything. So it's just really exciting to see that there is st strong interest in this kind of agriculture. And when I say this kind of agriculture, it's, it's a diversified system. It's, it's not just an annual row crop, it is multiple things.